your enthusiasts and welcome to Scale Affairs, the show where I take a closer look on anime figures of all sorts. So sit back and relax while I'll tell you what's maybe worth adding to your collection. Today's figure is an oldie but a goldie, Nandroid number 1628, Nadia from Fushiki no Umi no Nadia. She comes in a standard box, but where most other Nandos get a basic design with solid colors that matches the character, this package features a fancy ocean pattern, and if you are wondering why out of the blue, no pun intended, Good Smile is releasing a Nadia figure in 2021, the IP had its 30 year anniversary, which is indicated with this little logo in the upper left corner. Inside the box there is a sturdy double decker blister with the figure, faces and the main accessories on top, and all the body parts and mounting gear embedded in the second layer. It looks nice and tidy and also the Nando itself has a fair amount of protective foils on it. The first thing you will notice when you unbox her is how orange all of her body parts are. Of course Nadia has a bit of a darker tone, but if you see all the limbs in the blister, it looks kinda weird. Some of it might be due to my warmer camera settings, but it's the same I use for all my reviews and in my opinion the promotional pictures do not reflect the final color of this Nando. But before I go into more details, here are all the extra parts she comes with as well as some key specs about this release. The anime is one of my all time favorite shows and therefore buying a new modern Nando depiction of the main character was a no brainer. As fan of the source material I might be a bit biased, but if you look at her with a neutral point of view, this is not a very ornate figure, mostly because of the simply 90s character design they had to work with. Also there are not really much accessories included besides her lion pal king and a long expired can of food from a certain episode of the show. This does not sound like much and you're right it isn't, but when I thought about it, I can't list another item that is strongly associated with Nadia. There is blue water, king and not much more, even the can already feels a bit far fetched. The main gimmick of this Nando that you might already heard of is that there is a way to illuminate the blue water she wears as a necklace. Underneath it is a pretty deep hole and you need a specific miniature LED that is also used in a handful of other Nandos, but apparently has its origin in fishing gear. I did not buy it because if you don't live in Japan you have to order it online and pay a ton of shipping, but I used this tiny wired light string and this is what it might look like, minus the cable sticking out of her back of course. It's a neat idea and I'm all for the inclusion of lights in a figure, but if you're honest they could have included the LED into the figure even for a markup. Also there is one downside to this method of hiding the light and that is that her upper body has an additional brake line beneath her chest. This makes posing her a bit harder since sometimes the stack of body parts simply collapse. But on the plus side without the LED inside you can also articulate her torso a bit. Besides the color issues of her skin, the rest of it is pretty decent with gold ornaments and the shades of blue for her hair. Mine had a bit of a bump on her sash, but I guess that's just bad luck. King is our companion, can be displayed in two different poses and also is fairly detailed with his head mounted on a ball joint and his tail that can swivel around. Nadia comes with two alternative face plates, so besides her standard smile there is also a dub full expression and this angrier looking one that should be used for the can scene but might also work otherwise and will remind us that the Nadia in the show was a bit of a nag. And if we can focus on her head a bit longer, you might also notice that her old school hairstyle is made out of solid PVC and therefore this Nando is extremely top heavy. In conclusion, this figure is really mostly an anniversary piece to honor this timeless classic from Studio Gainax. I don't think that after this special occasion that there will be any additional characters from the show released and therefore you might not be able to relive your favorite moments or get more accessories to play with, but for a fan of the show or 90s anime in general, this might be the right collectible for you. I personally find it kinda sweet that they squeeze in all the characters into the release schedule without having a proper reason to do so other than a commemorative moment for a thing that ended ages ago. Next time another scale figure, a more recent one and also the first tall character on the show. So be sure you don't miss the next episode of Scaled Affairs when I once again take a closer look on anime figures of all sorts. Hopefully I can see you again in the future, until then take care and keep collecting!